What's the TDD? Welcome back to What's the TDD, an analysis of technology, disability, and desire with Callie, Bryce, and Michelle. Episode one of three of our TDD podcast discussing technology, desire, and disability. We will go ahead and kick start with Michelle. I don't know if you want to give us an overview of what you experienced. Yeah, so for my observation, I went to Coffee Underground in downtown Greenville which is like a really cute coffee shop. It's quite literally underground and it's like a really artsy space. And I know that was kind of a theme we all went into with our observations. They do live performances there, theater, improv. It's like a really like dark space, obviously since it's underground. And I noticed kind of a lot of things. I think my first thing I noticed was it like, you have to go down like a really steep staircase to get there. And I didn't notice like many other um, avenues to access that space, and which obviously, as the like name indicates, it was literally underground. So my first thing going in there, obviously knowing I wanted to look at things in terms of disability, technology, and desire, was the physical design of the space. So you obviously like, literally had to go straight downstairs to go in it. Um, it's kind of a tight space. You just kind of are pushed right into ordering the counter and then it opens up wider there's two rooms in there one room's like just a bunch of seating little tables and chairs a lot of like variety of seating so like couches or like these sort of chairs and then there's like this really dark room that's like has like actual like red silk curtains and that's where obviously they do all of their theater and improv in that back room but it's like really dimly lit in there and so yeah that's kind of just like the basic layout of the place I don't know, I think like the number one thing I noticed was a bit of inaccessibility in terms of that coffee shop, just because it literally only able to take stairs down into there, in my opinion. Which, what were some of the like, I guess, like describe like the clientele <clears throat> base? Like what was yeah. like the age range? Mm-hmm. And- I wanted like a Friday afternoon, so I think school was in session still, so it was a bit of an older crowd. Older men were like sitting on a table near me, and then I could tell like kind of tourists were there, because they were just like kind of dressed like tourists, (laughs) and like they seemed to just be talking about what they were doing, had a lot of shopping bags. But then it seems like there were some regulars I heard the like baristas interacting with the regulars being like oh hey so and so like you're back like what like do you want your usual so it seems like a place that like a lot of people frequent or just kind of stumble upon since it is right on like the main street of greenville so yeah i mean there's a variety of different people but all sort of in like a little bit older than me range or like my age no one really younger and it was like you said midday Midday, yeah. yeah. midday. Well, that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. coffee. I was there, like, noon to actually, like, four, because I stayed after I finished my observation, but um, do some work. <laughs> good study space. It is, like, a very good, like, I noticed, like, the other people that were in there were, like, definitely on their laptops and working, and so it definitely has a sort of, like, study environment or, like, working environment. Volume, like? What do you mean? Loud. Yeah, like, sensory. Oh, was it? Oh, it was quiet in there. So, like, you said, yeah. yeah. There wasn't much music. I think there was like maybe some like quiet background music playing, but nothing too loud. There was no like, there was kind of like a lack of technology. There was no like TVs or anything playing except for their menu, which I noticed was on a TV. Like rather than like a chalkboard or something else you might see at a restaurant or coffee shop. Uh, But no, it wasn't very loud. It seems like people had like headphones on or anything else to kind of modify the noise level that they wanted, so. I'm surprised they didn't have, like, a lift going down, because I've, like, walked around, like, downtown Greenville and, like, seen businesses that were underground like that, that were above certain shops or whatever, mm-hmm. and they had, like, um, wheelchair lifts there, um, mm-hmm. so that wasn't yeah, like a thing like, there. I didn't, like, the way I came in, and the way I've always gone in that place is, like, going down the stairs... However, I did know there did notice there was like a like a place you could have walked further, but it was really darkly lit, yeah. and so I didn't even feel like I could go back there. So I don't know if I had walked a little bit past the staircase, if it would have dropped me down back there. But it wasn't labeled. Or well, anything. I mean that's the thing. It's like I mean I know they, back in Lincoln there there's a coffee shop very similar down a steep road, mm-hmm. like a steep set of uh, stairs, and then you kind of go in this room and there's multiple businesses. 
and then you have to go further out to reach the elevator. Mm -hmm. So like you have to go into another building, mm -hmm. a hotel to get to the elevator that you can then go down into to get access mm -hmm. to like some of the bu businesses. It's not advertised at all. Yeah. Like, hey, this is Coffee Underground or this is where I forget what the, the name of the coffee shop is. down. Yeah, but like if you had even just a sign there, yeah. Because, I mean, I feel like a lot of times, too, especially for me, like, if I'm having, like, a really bad pain day or something, mm -hmm. like, my natural inclination is going to want to use the path with the least amount of resistance, yeah. mm -hmm. even if it's at the expense of me being uncomfortable. So, if I yeah. know that there is an elevator there, I will take the elevator. Yeah. But I'm not going to go around asking people and making myself out to be a spectacle because I need an elevator. You know, which yeah. is, like... Maybe that's but on you're my yeah, and some people don't have that privilege. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of people are going to just not go. Yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's, if, yeah, if if that's not even they realize that that's not even an option for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that they're not even going to try looking for it. Yeah, or they struggle down the stairs, or have somebody help them, or whatever, and then they see the elevator there. Yeah, yeah. it's like, damn, I wish I knew that. Well, depending on how, like, contemporary the the kind of building is and depending on, you know, how long it's been since they've developed downtown. Mm -hmm. Like, I know a lot of those old rickety buildings, especially in, like, Charleston, mm -hmm. probably have, like, weird little lips in the floor yeah. that might be hard to get over, whether or not they've, like, actually put a wedge in there so that, like, you can get up there if you have to use a wheelchair or any other kind of mobility aid. I don't know. Was it, like, pretty much all you know rock you know kind of cement floors like everything was like flat and, and all that like in the system the space actual... yeah i think it was carpeted in there and so and it was all flat throughout the rest of it i mean like it i think it, it just like has like an old feel so maybe just like to me it felt like it was like a little yeah. off but yeah. i think that's kind of just like the vibe of the place again like once you got in there you have to kind of to get in the physical space you have to like go through like a set of doors like not like one set of doors but like there's like two doors i believe and that was like a little it's a really like narrow entrance like even i felt like a little narrow going through there so i don't even know i'm i mean like i assume it has to pass ada accessibility in terms yeah. of the wheelchair but again that's like 34 inches or whatever i think it is which is like just to like pass like a normal wheelchair i believe mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a little steep and or a little narrow. And then like once you get in there, <laughs> once you get in there, like you are kind of forced to go to the barista, like which that makes sense. But then once you take like the right, it's more open. Mm -hmm. And again, there was like a lot of different kind of seating, which I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like it's an interesting vibe. It has like a lot of different seating, but it, I also think it could be good. Like you could be able to roll a wheelchair up to there yeah. if you wanted to or find a seat in there that was better at like being able to be transferred into if that if you needed to do that um, so there are a lot of different options in terms of like seating yeah and it was a big space so you could kind of you know spread out from people but yeah nice to find walkways and stuff mm -hmm. you know if you had like a cane and you needed yeah. to use that to navigate you wouldn't be running into a ton of stuff no so, yeah. and the, i noticed that the bathrooms were handicap accessible and they were labeled they had like the handicap yeah. sign and um the bathrooms were large it wasn't like a one single bathroom it was stalls but there was a handicap accessible one so yeah. i will the interesting thing is about art spaces in particular which i mean thinking about you know how and we've just discussed this before is just how desire is so it's so integral to art and how that is shown. I feel like for some reason, and I don't know what you guys think about this, but for some reason, I feel like so many art spaces, especially in places that are not very outwardly art friendly or these art vibe places. I mean, Greenville is more than here, but the spaces that are the art spaces are often these underground spaces, these sort of tucked away mm -hmm. hole in the wall kind of places where Mm, they afford this kind of vintagey vibe that can be calming, that can be peaceful, but in a building that was built, you know, almost a hundred years ago or whatever it was built in the thirties or forties or whatever, it's not going to be up to standard. Yeah. And so it almost makes you wonder how like for somebody wanting to do an open mic night or wanting to do something where they go and meet people but they either can't get access to that space or whether it causes them like an intense amount of anxiety like whether or not these kind of open mic spaces could be used to like have 
Zoom? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Just thinking about like ways in which you could have a TV up and like have a lot, like a, a room where people could sit and how many more people would join open mic night if they knew that they could just be projected on a screen rather than actually yeah. going to the physical space. And I mean, I don't see why it would, but then I, but I feel like a lot of people are like, well, they want people in the door so they can patronize their business. Yeah. But maybe you could pay like a, a $2 coffee, coffee for a Zoom fee. code. Yeah. Or even just like maybe get, get a chip. And it's like, okay, you get this coffee chip and you can use it the next time you're in our facility yeah, or something. But I don't know. But I feel like a lot of art people are going to be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you didn't get me. Snooty about, TV yeah. Into this space. Yeah. Well, so, and, and one thing that I think that I experience in coffee shops a lot of the time and something that I find to be pleasurable is like how strong they smell. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I love the smell of like roasting coffee. I love the smell of beans, you know, all that fun stuff. Do you think some people might find that maybe overpowering? I don't know if it was, because it was underground, I'm, I'm kind of questioning like the ventilation system that's mm-hmm. going on in there. So I don't know how that like olfactory experience. Yeah, I mean, like I definitely think probably people could find it overwhelming. And I know like the sound of an espresso machine is really loud, yeah. especially when it yeah. grinds the beans. Like I know like, from personal experience at like bidding bills like that was definitely like an issue like yeah but yeah i mean like i i actually like i'm so used to like the smell of coffee yeah. that like it's something that i don't even know i if i picked up on i think i i mentioned it in my notes somewhere that it just like smelled like a coffee it was nothing that like i you know thought about and I, that's actually something that i kind of wish i you know had paid more attention to but i mean how would you have in your yeah. your frame of reference for that the, you're also this, very used to it yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah this is a random tangent that i was thinking about one place in particular that i don't know about you guys but chipotle is one of the most <laughs> overwhelming sensory experiences as a yeah. consumer mm-hmm Oh yeah, and I feel like a lot of Clemson's really small. Mm-hmm. Even even like it's even, not very accessible. Uh, even can you even get up there without? There's it's up the hill. You would have to drive into the parking garage. And, and then, like, yeah. yeah, interesting. So There's like, a ramp. But I mean, yeah. like that the, the whole th- the reason why I brought it up is just because like I it's I, I I feel like some coffee shops can feel the same way. Yes. Depending on the vibe. No, I agree. Where you like, for example, Chipotle is like the 10 out of 10, the most stressful consumer experience. Depending on the Starbucks you go to, the yeah. music is bumping. Sometimes they have yeah. their own baristas pick, so they're playing like Disney soundtracks. Yeah. Sometimes the, the machines are going, there are like online orders beeping. There's like the person speaking on the um, you know headset with like the drive through. Like that's a, it's a, Starbucks is not a study space. For, Which is kind of why I'm saying like them. the art space is, for it to truly be an art space, it's kind of has to be tucked away and like, and yeah. I, I mean, unfortunately, yeah. at the expense of, like, being underground and, like, that's just, generally speaking, not going to be accessible unless you yeah. have some, uh, you know, a stair lift or, or whatever. I didn't go during a time that they had, like, a performance or anything going on, but I only knew that, like, Coffee Underground was, like, a theater place because I had been there before, and then I, when I was doing my observation, I went on their website and looked, like, a little bit more at, like, their mm-hmm. schedule of events or whatever was going on. Um, they don't really like there wasn't much advertisement in there if at all about like what they do there obviously you could tell because there is like a box office like sign and then like the red curtains which to me you know elicits a feeling of like a theater and so I would wonder if they like during the times they do art like do they close that like is that the space and you can like roam in there and there's like a divide there between like the arts happening and like kind of the rest of the coffee shop world or is it like you know open and people can roam that's interesting that's sexy yeah. I wrote in my thing that like the red curtains, because they were like silk red curtains. Yeah. I don't know. It, it did like elicit like a feeling it's of scary. desire. It was like, yeah, sensual. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What is it about? And it was so dark. Like, which I know, which I, <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was so, so dark. Dim. It was so dim, but like, um, and it was like noon. And I was like, it is so dark in here. But like, I don't, I, it brought out a vibe. And I know that could be like very sensory friendly for some some people but i mean i think it could also be like be overstimulating yeah. or worrying or like you know cause them to be nervous if their lights were too yeah dim. it's like this weird in 
this weird balance between something being like really clinical lighting versus like, yeah. oh, yeah. this feels like a speakeasy and we're not supposed to yeah. speak or look at anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I kind of wanted to sit in like the theater room because I've sat in there before, but there were only like, there was only like one person in there, um, whereas there were way more people coming in and out of the regular space and it was just so dark. Like I wanted to like be able to like write and not have like the blue light <laughs> be the only yeah. thing lighting up my face. I wonder if s- just velvet in general is sexy because it feels nice, or or is it it's because a haptic experience? Yeah. Oh, yeah, haptic experience. But then also, I also think just... the associations with like theater or like yeah. if you go down like the theater and then like burlesque and like all those sorts of things. Yeah. I think like that and it, or dark, the, the dark, dark spaces, lighting, dark yeah. Lighting, yeah, yeah, nighttime. Yeah. Night time, sleep time, yeah. sexy time. So, like, you, I, I know you made a mention of the fact that they have all different kinds of chairs and stuff, and they have, the, like, little designated seating areas. Um, and I think in, in some respects, like, if you're in a Starbucks or if you're in, a, you know, some kind of coffee place where they have a lot of the same kind of um, mm-hmm. arrangements, or if you're at, like, a long table with, like, other people or whatever, you can maybe feel, uh, like, a little bit more of a collective while you're there. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think like it being so disjointed maybe um, contributed to any kind of like grouping or uh, some kind of, you know, maybe norming behaviors to some extent? I mean, you're in the very short amount of time, Mm -hmm. but I mean, there are still plenty of norms of of unity, of ability, of communicated, like in uh, relation to space, proxemics, you know? Yeah, I think there probably could definitely be. I mean, there was, like, in the corner, like, a table that's, like, a booth in the corner that could definitely have a lot more people. You could pull up chairs, and I thought that that was very inviting. However, like, the time that we were there, it was, like, two teens who, like, clearly were just, like, in that corner because it was, like, dark, and they, like, wanted to be there. Um, but, like, the tables, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the tables um, we were at were, like, three different, like, little, like, just, like, tables with, like, two chairs, and yeah. then there was, like, three sets of them, and so it was, like, a, like, a bunch of us just, like, doing our work. Um, and that kind of felt like we were all doing our work, but like together. I think I didn't know the other two people that were sitting next to me, but then like on my right side was like these two chairs with the backs faced to them. So like their, their backs were like facing me and they're, they're like those like taller chairs, um, that you sit in like taller armchairs. Um, and so like that kind of felt like. I was like, they're turned to me, but I don't even know them. Like, I didn't want them to sit with me, but yeah. yeah. And I, I like again, I think like the curtains also kind of felt like, oh, can I go in there? Like, yeah. it's intriguing. Yeah. Well, another thing too, talking about lighting, I think is very interesting with the space in particular. It's underground. Mm-hmm. It's dimly lit. You have this these little coves inside the space that is like this kind of sexy feel to it. This like inter- prohibition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> prohibition. Yeah, exactly. Speakeasy, whatever. The one thing I was thinking about is the fact that low lighting and like less lighting golden lighting just makes everybody look prettier just I mean, I, yeah what you think yeah. that we get a blue light in here and just put it it's you're gonna see every pore every i mean from this stake of like okay what is seen as stereotypically beautiful i think that there's something about the warm light it's softening dimly lit, it's mm-hmm. softening which thinking from a, from a, like a performance perspective is going to be so much more inviting for people to want to get up there instead of having like six different like gleaming spotlights on their face yeah. to, you know, make them feel self-conscious about this. It's kind of like the, I don't know, lowering those inhibitions in a prohibition space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> prohibition <laughs> inhibition. Yeah. Well, and you said that they were largely older folks there mm-hmm. at the time well okay how how densely crowded was it like i know you said not a ton of people but like put a number of quantifier yeah i mean like i think in the in, in the hour that i did my observation like 25 people probably came in but that's like i think when i was sitting in there like you know 10 people would like sit down at a time then like yeah. people would change out um relatively quickly except for like a few that were there the whole time that i was there yeah, any particular, like, demographic data you, like, picked out on, aside from, like, age, you know? Um, it was pretty, actually, heavily, like, male-presenting people. Um, all of the baristas were, you know, more masculine-presenting. <laughs> um, and, like, then that group of tourists were, like, um, a few women. Yeah. Um, but Fanny it was, like, packs. pretty even. Fanny pack short cargo digital cameras Mm -hmm. at that time very bad 
I yeah. am fascinated with this. Why is it that when we were at Methodical, I'm pretty sure it was all male presenting baristas as well. There was there was one woman there. The, I think. But I feel like but in my like experience, in yeah. my experience, I feel and they like all that is. Kind of straight. <laughs> oh no. Kelly thinks everybody's gay. I do think everybody's Kelly gay. Kelly thinks everybody's gay. Okay, but but what my point is is that that is interesting. From a, I mean, talking about baristas. Yeah. Like I feel like it's not super male centric. Like that's not the demographic wise. It's not like men. Most of the time, I feel like you see at least a mixture of men and women. Food work, you know, domestic. Yeah, yeah domestic spaces. Yeah. Space making. Yeah. That Wait, kind it's of just stuff. interesting. I mean, I guess when schools and you might get a different like demographic, but yeah. I mean, they're I mean, a little like, younger. Greenville's is like in Greenville's yeah. like art, more artsy space anyway, where people are going to be more. But one thing I was thinking about while you were t- where you both were talking is so is from an objective or this is my question is there anything that is sacrificed through accessibility when you're creating a sense of novelty so like if we have this space that is kind of tucked away it's the sexy space it's this you know it's not super big bells and whistles technology how does somebody that is wanting to make a space more accessible do it in a way that is explicit enough so that people know there is a space that's wheelchair accessible, not just having a wheel, you know, having an elevator, having a wheelchair lift or whatever, doing it in a way such that it doesn't, or maybe you say, fuck it. I don't care about the novelty of this kind of speakeasy like space. And we're going to just make it accessible because that's more important. I mean, I think it's more important. Yep. Than making it this pretty, but I mean, somebody might want to maintain that vibe because they're worried about consumership or they're worried about keeping their doors open. Well, and then like on the um, like what you're saying, like also making things like speakeasy, underground, like desirable, like sexy, and not allowing that certain demographic in there shows like it's like well they don't they don't like need to be that exactly type. like they're not desirable, sexy, you're able to be in that them. space. Yeah, yeah. Put like not allowing them in those spaces. Which I think the technology is not sexy enough to be included in Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think, too, it's it's this weird thing where you have, like, you know... But I think so many people do it really well where they're able to make something... Because just because something is... Whether it's technology, whether it's it's having more open spaces... Because I think there's something, like, very artsy or, like... Uh, hole in the wall kind of vibe about like narrow hallways and like rickety feeling mm-hmm. and like that yeah. shit's just not accessible like no. it, to, to in a lot of ways like yeah. having these things so does is that a larger problem with our social standards of what is sexy or or novel or interesting or I think it harkens back to the like the yes. prohibition speakeasy older times and it's you think about the people that were, you know I mean we just read about it in like the Fink book, like Ugly Laws, yeah. like those people like weren't allowed like in those spaces, they weren't yeah. even allowed out. So it's yeah. like oh it, like going back to like the good old days of like speakeasies, it's like okay, yeah, and like who was led into who those? Was yeah. Who and and uh, while well, thinking about Why do we like, want that aesthetic? Like why can't we update it? Uh, one thing I find is uh, fascinating, good going back to your point about like good old days, whatever, the thinking about the performance and the sort of uh, open mic or like road shows, you had the uh, road show, you know, brother, we're out there, like road shows where it's taking all those people. And then you had like the freak show. And that was the space in which people were welcome if mm-hmm. they had a, you know, visible disability or like had some aspect about them that they were at least. Did you actually the Elvis movie? I actually didn't see it, but if that's like, like, well, I mean, like in the beginning of it, they're like, he's like on like Elvis is like, like joins like a road show or whatever it is that he joined to like get his fame going around to like different little like carnivals. And like a part of it was like that. I think like the guy that managed him also like managed like a freak show sort of thing. Or like there were people that also went along to those carnivals were like freak shows. And so there was like, um, you know, people with dwarfism there and other sorts of things. So like that was like 
part of the movie. That's all I've actually thought of. Yeah. Well, yeah. In, in kind of going to that point, the, the, did you, have you guys you read The Phantom of the Opera? No. I've seen the musical. Okay, well, musical and the movie is... So, essentially, the plot is that the, the Phantom was abused as a kid. Well, this isn't a movie. This is somewhat adapted, and the, the, the novel is a lot different. It's more like a Frankenstein kind of trope. But, essentially, it plays on this idea of um, injury or, or, you know, some sort of a visible disability, you know, insecurity, whatever you have it, and this idea of him existing underground the theater. Mm. Mm. So it's very much that the theater is beautiful, light lit, it's boisterous, you have all these operatic shows happening, colorful, exciting, and then he, in the novel, owns the whole facility, but he lives underground in this like dimly lit kind of cove. And so you, you think if from a perspective of hidden what similarities are there about hidden space and then also hidden disability i don't know i just think that that's a really interesting like an idea of desire a desire to be hidden yeah. whether that be unlit or having a mask cover your face or you know being as part of a, a circus road show like an elvis yeah. or whatever like how can you capitalize on it as well as yeah, well, is it a desire then? Is the desire to be hidden yes, that's more kind of, of a desire to not be seen because being seen is often violent? It or would, can yes. result in violence. And, and that's for, but I mean, I think that that to the point about people that are wanting to go and do an open mic or they're wanting, that's a scary experience doing mm-hmm. some yeah. sort of theatrical performance. But I think that there is some sort of, and we talked about this with Foucault, this desire for. Um, excitement that comes from doing something that you're not supposed to be doing or mm-hmm. or you know if you're hidden somewhere that implies a sense of excitement from breaking those norms or breaking mm-hmm. those which kind and of and that's what the freak shows capitalized on that's yeah. what the side shows you know they, they were able to you know use well I'm going to be spectacle regardless I might yeah. as well make some money off of that yeah which and like, in turn they got to travel they got notoriety they got you know and the thing that's frustrating about it's like which is like go queen like go off do what you want my thought is is there ever it can we exist in a space where that's duly true whereas like this is a hidden space where people can be hidden and I mean I think of like underground sex uh like Dungeons, parties, dungeons, yeah. where it's like this open space where, or even just like a masquerade like situation yeah. where it's like that's not an inhibitor for people to be expressive about the things that they're interested in. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just an interesting thought. Yeah. Should we touch on like the technology of the space? Yeah. Oh, for sure. No, we're just keeping us on track. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, <laughs> For the technology, I think, like, the most interesting thing is, is that, like, I noticed that their, um, like, menu was, like, literally on, like, a TV, yeah. but it was, like, the tiniest print imaginable, and I had to get, like, <laughs> I had to get, like, so close, I was, yeah. like, and I, like, couldn't read it, but what was funny, it was, like, on a TV, and I was, like, oh, wow, this is, like, cool, you know, it could be really done well, and then it's, like, they've got, like, a giant piece of paper taped to the TV that's, like, there may be things we're updating our menu, and it's, like, why can't, like, we be using this technology and like still adapting things and making them more accessible like now I'm anxious like reading this menu A I can't read it B I don't know what's on the menu because you're telling me that half the shit's not on the menu and then like do they even say what's not on the menu no it was just like we're updating our menu some things might not be available and now I'm like oh gosh like I can't I don't know having and having a digital menu is it defeats the for purpose. the literally it's for the ability to change it. Yeah, and so they it yeah. wasn't that is updated. The benefit. Or and like or have it so it can flip between screens so you don't have to have super fucking tiny font. That's what I was gonna say. Like you can flip between screens or make it interactive, like maybe yeah. you pull the menu down and it's like you can touch it, like and then you swipe to like yeah. and then I noticed I didn't notice because I was, you know, so in my head about like okay, I need like the the raspberry mocha drink, like trying to mm-hmm. memorize what it was called, the ladybug. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> Um, and ordering it, but I noticed when I was like doing my observation that they did have like you know print menus that you could like pick up and do like, yeah. but like if the like that makes sense, like those might not be updated, but it's like 
you know, why wasn't that you also can, updated? You can change the screen right now. Yeah. You can go on that computer. Google Docs. Open, like the, open a PDF. Except, yeah. yeah. The general manager can go in the back and click some buttons and it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and then another thing in terms of technology, um, I, I mean, like, I'm just thinking of, like, more, you know, contemporary technology. Like, the Wi-Fi, like, you had to get up and go and ask the guy and he'd give you a passcode Rather than to the point that like I saw the people mm. next to me do that and I was like I'm gonna use my hotspot <laughs> like, yeah. yeah I'm just like that's like too much for me <laughs> yeah. um and uh, yeah so that was another thing but like then like I don't I, like I think this might be like stretching the terms of technology but I noticed that like on the posts um they had like these like um like printed out pieces of paper that were like laminated that had like three like things that were on it i think um one was like you need to get the wi-fi um another thing was um what were they i probably have them in my notes somewhere but they were just like little like reminders about the space but they also did accompany each thing that they wrote with like a visual representation of the thing so like the wi-fi had yeah, like a wi-fi symbol yeah um oh like um it was to bus yourself, so like, okay. um, like you know, put your own coffee away. So it was like a little bus. Yeah. So like, there was like little like things, visual um, indicators. Visual indicators. Yeah. But again, like the bus, like if you just saw a bus, you'd be like, is this a bus stop? Like if you couldn't like read like the yeah. physical print under it, like I don't yeah. know. Um, but I thought that was interesting um, in terms of the technology in there. Um, there was some um, posters and stuff which I wrote down as tr- transmission. Yeah. <laughs> transmission. <laughs> technology showing you some local events that were happening near the bathroom um but yeah those are like the things i noticed i think the biggest one was like that they were using a piece of technology that could be so accessible and i was kind of excited when i walked in and saw that but to see that it kind of just flopped yeah it flopped it's almost worse than the a poorly done effort is 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 more sad than no effort yeah to some extent Cause you can at least paint it. I love no bathroom effort. reading material. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I need a stack of magazines. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care if I'm going number one or number two. I'm on three <laughs> things to read. Yeah, need to flip through my content. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Closing thoughts, uh, comments. Concerns, okay, should remarks. we rank the space? Oh, okay. So we're gonna do in- like a god tier. Is it mid tier or? A- I mean, like I thought it was somewhere in between like mid and god. Like I would probably give it like a. Six and a half, like Demi God. Like, like yeah. I personally enjoyed this space, and I think the way that I was able to use the space is really beneficial, mm-hmm. and like I felt comfortable there. However, like going in there with like a more analytical lens about like the three technology, disability, and desire, um, I think that it definitely could use some work. Yeah. Um, and there was like a lot to think about. I think with those like three things intersecting, kind of and like, I think I saw them all sort of intersect in some way. Yeah. Higher in the desire quality, maybe. I think like it definitely was like a bit more of like a desirable space. I think it just kind of exuded that energy. Yeah. Um, I think with the darkness nice. and you know the red coloring, yeah. the dark wood that was in there. Um, I think even like the different seating was like a little bit desirable as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Desire, technology, and then disability <laughs> are how well they and did those things. Disabilities yeah. at the bottom of the pyramid. So, uh, well, that's a great start to our first yeah. episode. Yeah. Great start and great end to our one out of three set episode series of uh, Keeping Up with TDD. We'll go ahead and probably get rolling with the next one, Bryce, uh, on the next episode, but we'll see you back there. Bye! Bye. <laughs>